Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we'll be talking about basic data types and variables in Python. Now there are two popular versions of Python out today that people are still using essentially, Python version two and Python version three. We're not going to worry about that for now, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. Um, so when it's become important for us to distinguish between the versions, I'll call that out. As we've been doing for all the other languages so far, we'll restrict our attention to Boolean and numerics type. So we haven't addressed complex types like arrays and so on, maps and these other things that might be offered as basic types in other languages. We just simply said we're going to focus on numeric types and Booleans, for example. So let's take a look at the basic types provided in Python. Python supports Boolean types using the bool keyword. The value for bool are true and false. However, Python, like Groovy and JavaScript, have this idea where non-Boolean values can be tested for false or fruitiness. For example, but like a zero value, 0, 0.0, you know, floating point zero, or even the none value are just a few of the things that could be considered false in Python. You can test something in a Boolean way to say, is, is it um, false? Now, other languages that have, um, so I can go, for example, when you have something that's nil, you can use that in a Boolean context. You specifically have to say, um, if error not equals to nil or error equals to nil, that comparison, that returns a Boolean value because either true or false. And that is what the if statement uses. This is not a case in Python. You can just say if on some variable, even if that variable contains the value zero or null or 0, 0.0, but it's zero in this example, you can say if f and then just continue and Python will evaluate that as something that's false. You don't have to compare f itself to the value zero in a Boolean context. You can, but you don't have to. So Python version two, and this is where there's a difference between Python version two and Python version one. So Python version two um, support int, long, and float as numeric types. And we've seen those before in other languages. Of course, in the other languages, we have seen double, short, byte, characters as numeric types also. In Python is either an int, in Python 2, this is the version is important, I will I'll show you how to see which version of Python you're running. In Python version 2, you have int, long, and float. In Python version 3, all you have is int and float. It does not mean that you will not be able to create a variable that holds a very, very large integer. It does not mean that. All it means is that from now on, any old number in Python version 3 is simply an int. Okay, we got how small it is or how big it is, it's an int. Whereas in Python version two, below a certain size, it would be an int and above a certain size, it would be a long. And I'll demonstrate that by using both version of Python, just for people who have version three to see what I mean. For people who have version two, it kind of doesn't matter. All right. Again, like I said, Python simplified the, the types. And so Python does not have a character type. Um, there's no, um, just like there's no character, there's no um, byte or double. I mentioned there's no double before. There's no double and there's no byte. One of the important things about Python variable declaration is that you do not get to specify a type. I mean, it's not like it's optional typing. It's like you do not get to specify a type. So let's talk about a Python interpreter. So we can launch a Python interpret, um, interpreter from a command line interface. This would be either terminal for Mac, Unix, and Linux users or for the DOS, from a DOS prompt if you're Windows users. Once you're at the command line, you can type Python followed by pressing the enter key or return key, and that's going to start a Python interpreter for you. Once the Python interpreter starts, you can see the version number here. At the Python prompt, you can type help, and it's going to tell you some of the things that you can do, like you can actually help on specific things. You can call help with like a function with open and close parentheses. Uh, you can quit the interpreter by typing quit and then open and close parentheses. So it's like a function call and press enter. And now you're, you exit the interpreter. But now that we're back in the interpreter, let's play around a little bit. So we're going to just type true and enter. Now let's try a Boolean expression, true or false. But here, a single bar means or. If you have a statement that says true or false, or you wanted to test that, the result would be true. We can create a variable simply in Python by simply assigning a value to a variable. If we type a equals true and press enter, that's it. We've created a variable and assigned it a value of true. And Python has determined that that variable should have the type bool, and we can check that by using, um, type in the A variable, just type in it and enter, and it's going to print out its current value. Or we could check the type by using the type function. So let's talk about integers. 
Let's create an integer variable. So we'll type age is equals to 35 and press enter. Now we know how that creates a variable for us and we can just type age and again enter and it will print out the value 35. But let's check the type. So we use a type function. So type open parentheses age close parentheses and enter and we see how it's an integer. Now what I'm going to say now is just for the people who are running Python version 2 and Python version 2 only. This does not apply to people who are running Python version 3. So if you're running Python version 3, when you start up your Python interpreter and you look at the first line and it says 3 Python 3 point something, this does not apply to you. And all you need to do is sit back and watch for a few seconds without typing anything. And you don't probably need to ob observe anything. So just listen. For the people who are typing, using Python version 2, this applies to you. So this is where the difference is. So we're going to start playing now with long. All right. So we can create a long in Python version 2 by appending lowercase l or capital L after the number. So for example, we can type L is equals to 25 L, press enter. And of course, we can print out back the value by just typing L and enter. And of course, it shows us 35 with L after it. If we want to see the type, of course, we can use the type um, function to see that. The important thing I want to show you is that that's us explicitly saying that we want to create a long. But in Python, you don't even need to think about this. So what I'm going to do now is create a variable with the maximum value for an integer, add one to it. And first I'll show you how with the maximum value of an int, it's an int. And I want to add one to it and store it back. It changes to a long. I'm not going to explain this much, but let's just import the syst module, SYS module. And we haven't really explained what this is yet, but just trust me. So we do import syst. Then I'm going to say variable m is equals to syst that max int. And this says, give me the maximum value of an integer on this system. So it could be system dependent, okay? Now I'm going to check, check the type of it. Uh, so the type of m and you will see it always an integer. Now I'm going to say, let's add one or let's increment this value by one. Say m is equals to m plus one, which means take the current value of m, which is the maximum value of an int, add one to it and then store back, evaluate that. And whatever that resulting um, value is for that expression, store it back in m. And now let's check the type of m. And now you see that m is a long, which means that when the new value was being stored back in m, Python said it needs to be a long, so it change the type to a long. And that is all we need to say about long in Python version 2. If you're in Python version 3 and you try to do any of what I just said before, which is type L after a number, it's going to give you an error. Even if you try to import sys and look for max int, it is not there. Okay? All right, so back to our regular schedule program for everyone. So people in Python version 3, welcome back. As I said earlier, that in Python, a Boolean value is actually a numeric type. It's sort of like how in C++, they type def or create an alias for um, an integer that's called a Boolean. So Boolean is actually treated like an integer, even though it has, you know, like a keyword in, in C++. Same here, you have the keyword true and false, and yet it's treated like an integer. And so let's test that. So let's look and um, print out our value of the variable a, and now we see that oh, that's a Boolean. And now we can say create a new variable called b equals a plus 5. So what I'm just saying is take a Boolean value, add 5 to it, and now that really shouldn't make sense any any other time. But here we can see it, oh, it doesn't give me an error, and I can say was the type of b, and it's an int, and I print out the value of b, and you can see if a is true, then 1 is added to 5, and you get 6. If a is false, it would have been, you know, 0 plus 5 is just gave 5. If that seems a little confusing, um, it kind of is. It's something that's been plaguing C and C++ for a long time, and that's why Go decided to get rid of it, and there's no such thing in Go. Even in Scala and stuff, you cannot do that sort of thing. So I don't know why Python decided to go down the road of allowing you to do this thing that's generally dangerous, and people have learned from C and C++ that they shouldn't do. All right, so let's talk about character. So I said Python does not have a character as a type. So you can create something. Let's say we said A is equal to some single quote and some character there, and we look at the type, it's going to be a string, not going to be a character. But what Python does allow us to do is to take an integer and create a character from it using this chr function. So it's sort for character function. So we can say c equals to chr, open parentheses, close parentheses with 40 as an argument, and we will get a character. And we can, of course, print that out. If we want to see the type of C that of that character we created just now with a chr function, we can type type, of course, and C, and we'll see that oh, it's a string. Note this is not a character. Now, if we do help on this um, 
function name. So you can type use the type function to tell you the type of a verb if you don't know what it is. But then and you can also use the help function to tell you, give you some documentation about any function or anything that's in Python. Okay. So now if you type help, open parentheses, um, chr, close parentheses, and enter, you will see that it tells you that, oh, this is a function that takes an integer, like we provided 40 in this example, and it returns a character. But if you read further down, it tells you that oh, it's really performing a string, it's returning a string with one character. So it is returning a string with one character, and that's the character that's returned that you want. But it's never really returning, it doesn't have a concept really of a character as a separate type. Let's talk about floats. So a float is created when a decimal number is used or an expression results in a decimal value. Again, very straightforward and pretty simple. So here we're going to say f is equals to 3.0 and you know, you can check the type of that and you'll see it's a float. We can say g is equals to 10 divided by 3.0. Notice I have the number 10 which is an old number so that's going to be an integer in this case but if I had a really 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 big old number it would have been still an integer in Python 3 but if I'm using Python 2 it would have been a long but either way it would have been an old number and if I divide it by a floating point number, I'll get a floating point result. Um, so if you divide, if you have an expression that involves a float, the result is going to be a float. Now that's one of those things that are really complicated rules to sort of just state in, you know, so quickly, but that's the gist of it. If you, if your expression involves a floating point number, the result is going to be floating point. So if you have a really complicated expression and some of the things are, you know, whole numbers and some are floats, the result is going to be float. If they're all all numbers, then your result is going to be an all number. Again, you, different programming languages sort of treat things differently and some of them may surprise you, but that's basically the general rule you could kind of live with. So here, 10 divided by 3.0, where 3.0 is a float, you'll expect g to have a floating point number and you can just say g and print it out and you'll see. Of course, if you do g is equal to 10 divided by 3, that's just two whole numbers and you can get a whole number result. Um, similarly, if you do 10.0 divided by 3, enter, you get a floating point result because there, one of the number, the 10, is a floating point number. What I'm going to do is go into Visual Studio Code Editor and I'm going to write a Python script, basically reusing our Groovy code from Chapter 3, Section 5, and I'm going to modify it really quickly along the lines of what we've learned so far. And of course, we're going to be able to run it inside Visual Studio Code and we should be able to get sort of the same result that we got when we run any of our other programs. So that's, that's sort of the, the goal of writing these programs or script is that if we want to run one or the other, the results should pretty much look the same. Now, of course, when there's things that are not supported, well, we can't do anything about it. Um, and so, for example, if you remember in Python 2, you're not going to be able to, you're going to be able to create a long, um, variable. Python 3 users, you're not going to be able to create a long variable. So instead of saying long for your variable, you just want to make that just a really big number if you want. Okay, the final takeaway here from Python is that there's no way to specify a type for a variable. Python infers it, assigned it, and you have to live with it. Um, and the second key thing is that Python version 3 doesn't support long. All old numbers are just ints. So that should make your life somewhat easier because you don't have to think about when you should use one or the other and certainly with dynamic typing you don't have to worry that if you overflow you can have an exception because your new value couldn't fit into whatever. Um, of course the downside with dynamic typing is that you can easily change from one type to another like if you know something like age should be a number and then some computation result because of end user input or programming error result in a floating point value. Now you have an age that's a floating point um, value and that can possibly mess up your computation later on. So, um, so those are the kind of things that um, everybody who deals with dynamic um, type languages have to deal with um, or knows about, but it's worth mentioning. So anyway, that's Python for you. And it's probably the one that deviates the furthest from all other languages. But again, if you look at it and you compare it to Groovy and even Scala, it isn't really that far. Um, you know, it's like Python is on one extreme and C and C++ is on, on the other extreme. And somewhere in the middle is like Go is closest to C and C++ and Scala and that sort of thing um, is closer to Java, but it's also kind of closer between Java and Python. And Python sits somewhere, and Java, sorry, um, Java fits somewhere between um, C++ and you know Scala and Groovy, right? If that makes sense to you. But in my head, I can start to see the picture of what I'm talking about. But um, so anyway, um, follow me on Twitter. Follow me at um, on Twitter. It's Stravorsity One. Um, Instagram is Stravorsity. And 
take care appreciate your time subscribe if you haven't subscribed already spread the word please i would appreciate it um we definitely want to see the channel grow thumbs up the video and if you have questions or comment post them in the video um in the comments below i read them and see you next time take care have a great day bye